Hello my dear students I hope you are doing well Myself Adarsha Kayas working as a lecturer in Government Polytechnic Nagamangala I welcome you all for the most useful and beautiful videos on 5th sem electronic servicing lab Before getting into the actual concepts of this session we'll have a discussion on what is electronic servicing lab what are all the concepts we'll be studying in this lab why board has introduced this subject in this semester the lab which teaches the different electronic components of a computer along with their function detecting the error and faulty parts of a computer using different methods and also helps us to repair the electronic components by adopting many safety procedure to bring the component into a working condition is called as electronic servicing lab in this course we will be learning different external components of a computer internal parts of a motherboard simple methods to rectify the faults in an smps basic steps or basic configuration of bios different types of beep codes to detect the errors on a motherboard importantly assembling and disassembling a computer and at last but not the least installing a operating system on a computer why this lab at this semester it is the next question after successful completion of this year you will be entered into the world as a junior engineer also called as junior hardware engineer as you are a product of a electronics and communication branch and you are all should be in a position to know the different parts of a computer different error and faulty detection and correction procedure of a computer more importantly you should know to disassemble and to assemble a computer after assembling you should install os if you know all the above mentioned procedure and the concept will be so called as a successful junior hardware engineer after learning this lab you can become entrepreneur i mean you can own your own business by establishing computer service center and you can earn money i hope you are happy now so i request all of you to concentrate more while studying the different experiment of this lab and gain more knowledge and be a successful hardware engineer by getting into a good job if you know all the concepts of this lab company will definitely choose you as a engineer moving on agenda of this session is identification of different external components of a computer what is computer computer is an electronic device which takes the input and processes it and gives the output this is the simple definition of a computer as the definition mentions it has input device output device processing device and also memory or storage device so 
द एम ऑफ दिस एक्सपेरिमेंट और द एजेंड ऑफ दिस सेशन इज लर्निंग द डिफरेंट एक्सटर्नल कॉम्पोनेंट ऑफ ए कंप्यूटर द डिफरेंट एक्सटर्नल कॉम्पोनेंट ऑफ ए कंप्यूटर इंक्लूड्स स्पाइक बस्टर यूपीएस मॉडर्म हेडफोन माइक्रोफोन जॉयस्टिक एक्सटर्नल हार्ड डिस्क फ्लैश ड्राइव वेब कैमरा एक्सेट्रा आई होप इट्स द एजेंड ऑफ दिस सेशन इज वेरी क्लियर शेल बी मूव ऑन द फर्स्ट एक्सटर्नल कॉम्पोनेंट वी नीड टू स्टडी अंडर दिस एक्सपेरिमेंट इज स्पाइक बस्ट इट इज सिंगल इनपुट मल्टीपल आउटपुट डिवाइस बिकॉज इट हेज गॉट ओनली सिंगल इनपुट विच इज कनेक्टेड फ्रॉम द मेन पावर सप्लाई एंड इट हेज गॉट मेनी आउटपुट पोर्ट्स डिपेंड्स अपॉन द मैन्युफैक्चर माई डिवाइस हेज गॉट फोर आउटपुट पोर्ट्स वन कैन बी कनेक्टेड टू प्रिंटर and other can be connected to scanner and other two can be connected to a monitor and a cpu the number of ports may be varies it may be 4 or it may be 6 or it may be depends upon our requirement hence it is called as single input multiple output device mainly this device is also called as spike guard सर्च प्रोटेक्टर और पवर स्ट्रिप बिकॉज इट प्रोटेक्ट ऑल अवर कनेक्टेड डिवाइस फ्रॉम हाई एक्सटर्नल वोल्टेज हेंस इट इज कॉल्ड एज सर्च प्रोटेक्टर इट हैज ए इनबिल्ट सर्च प्रोटेक्शन सर्क्यूट दिस सर्च प्रोटेक्शन सर्क्यूट मे बी बिल्ट इन by using varistors or fus the device which i am showing now consist of a fuse this fuse when external voltage or external current flows through it automatically the copper element which is present inside this fuse will burn hence the circuit becomes open thus protects all our external devices the second external component we need to study under this experiment is ups ups stands for uninterrupted power supply and ups is a device that allows a computer on a group of computers to keep running for a at least shorter period of time when the primary power source is lost mainly ups provides protection from power changes the picture we are seeing now is the complete ups set which is available in our computer lab this ups set provides the power to these many computers which is available in our computer lab ups subset mainly consists of the batteries and this ups sub block this is the main power supply from this power main power input is given to the this ups sub block this ups sub block consist of rectifiers these rectifiers convert input ac power into dc next the output of the rectifier which is under this ups sub block is given to this batteries the batteries are arranged in the series fashion these batteries are used to store the charges 
output of the batteries which are connected in the series fashion again it is given back to this ups sub block through this black wire to the inverter inverter converts dc into ac both rectifier inverter comes under this ups sub block output of this inverter is given to this switch next the output of the switch given to the load mean to say in my case load is a computer ups has got many advantages mainly it provides backup power it provides protection against power changes and also it protects our hardware in ups there are mainly two types of ups one is online ups and the other one is offline ups in our computer lab we are using online ups mean to say when the primary power source is lost no need to switch it on for any power source automatically the computers or the load will run even though power source is lost whereas in case of offline ups someone should switch on the ups to run on the load the next external component of the computer is modem there are two main problems in transmitting a digital data over a telephone network firstly telephone line is designed to carry only ac analog signals if a binary signal is applied directly to the telephone network it simply will not pass secondly binary data is usually transmitted at high speeds this high speeds data will be filtered out by the system with its limited bandwidth to overcome these two problems we have designed a special device called modem it is a combination of two words modulator and demodulator modem is a network hardware device that modulates one or more carrier wave signals to encode digital information for transmission and demodulates signals to decode the transmitted information it is a type of hardware device that converts between analog and digital data in real time for two way network communication the different features we need to keep in mind while purchasing a modem is first one is speed if you want to have data transmission at the highest speed you need to buy a modem with highest speed and some of the modem comes with a features called voice over data that is it supports both voice and data simultaneously the third feature is synchronous and asynchronous data that is synchronous means both upstream and downstream works at the same speed whereas asynchronous means upstream and downstream works at the different rate and some features of modem is data compression they also comes with inbuilt capability of data compression the other feature of modem is they comes with inbuilt flash memory 
Next feature is self testing. Before getting turned on completely, they undergo self test to check for all the components for the working condition. I'll repeat the different features of this modem are one is speed, voice over data, synchronous and asynchronous data transmission, data compression, flash memory, and also self testing. In the video, you can see two different modems. One is modem which is connected to the network which is comes via cable through your BSNL network or ATL network. This is the modem to connect through wire. And this is the wireless modem from geo network providers. See, there are different vendors for the modem. The one I am showing, it is the manufacturer from Netgear. There are uh, different manufacturers like D-Link and so on. See, this modem has got antenna for the reception and the transmission of signals. And this is the on and off switch. And this is the adapted cable to provide power to this modem. You can insert power cable through this knob like this. And this is the reset button to reset your basic modem configuration. And you can also reset your modem by typing 192.168.1.1 on a web browser. And this is the port to connect LAN cable. My modem has two LAN cable connector. And we have to connect the cable from the network provider to this modem, this port is named as ADSL port. Okay, the cable from the network provider should be connected to this port. And you can have different notation to rep know the different configurations of this network mo net gear modem. You can have 1 and 2 for the two LANs connected and you can also use Wi-Fi connection with this wired modem and thus Wi-Fi notification arise by these two indications. And this is the wireless modem from Geo network provider. The power to this modem is you can connect give through this charger cable. And it has got two buttons, one to get on, turned on and turned off and other to activate WPS. So you can, you can see the signal also. It indicates the battery status. It indicates the battery status and it indicates the network status and it indicates the Wi-Fi status. You can also connect this wireless modem to a computer through the USB also. These are some of the points we should know or we should remember while purchasing a modem. If you want to access a network with a very high speed and without connection you have to go for wireless modem of this type. And if you are ready to take your wired connection from the network provider like BSNL, you have to go with the wired modems. Printer. It is an output device which is connected externally to the computer via USB cable. A printer is an external hardware output device that takes the electronic data stored on a computer or other devices and generates a hard copy of it. In computing, a printer is a peripheral which takes a persistent human readable representation of graphics or text on paper or similar physical media. The different types of printers available on the market are 3D printer which prints 3D images, all-in-one printer that is it performs both scanning and photocopying operations, dot matrix printers 
इंकजेट प्रिंटर्स कलर प्रिंटर्स लेजर प्रिंटर्स एलईडी प्रिंटर्स प्लॉटर एंड थर्मल प्रिंटर प्लॉटर आर नथिंग बट दीज आर द प्रिंटर्स यूज टू प्रिंट फ्लेक्सस और लार्जर इमेजेस एज बींग ए हार्डवेयर इंजीनियर वी शुड नो सम ऑफ द बेसिक फीचर्स ऑफ ए प्रिंटर the features are very simple you can easily understand by seeing the, these two types of printers the one with the white color is the hp laser z 1020 plus printer and the one with the black color is the samsung printer with a model number express m2021 printers this printer has a got a feature of to print the pages on both the sides automatically without the intervention of man whereas if you want to print page on both the sides you need to reinsert the pages i hope it is very clear next the second important feature is this printer can print more number of pages per minute when compared to this printer and both the printers it's connected by a cable called usb and it has every printer has got two connectors one is usb connector and the other one is for power cable and installation of basic hardware is very simple you can download it from the a particular website onto your computer you can easily install it to your computer and this is the paper entry wall and this is the exit wall and if you want to see the internal part of a computer this is a printer here you going to insert ink pot you can see the ink pot in this modulo this is the part where you actually fill ink towards you can print only black and white images on both the printers and if you want to have color prints you have to purchase color printers headphone headphone it's a pair of loud speaker drivers that are designed to wear on or around the head over the user's ears these are electroacoustic transducers which converts an electrical signal into corresponding sound in the user's ear headphones are designed to allow a single user to listen to an audio source separately in contrast to a loud speaker which emits the sound into the open air for anyone nearby to hear headphones are also known as ear speakers or earphones the point to remember is there is a difference between headphone and headset headphone is a device without microphone whereas headset is a device with microphone there are three categories of headphones the first one is super aural that is these type of headphones covers our complete ears it completely close our ear pod like this this type of device will remove the external noise whereas the next one is circum aural as the name indicates it exactly sits on the circumference of our ears the third category of headphone is intra aural which exactly sit on the hole of our ears if you want to listen a music or an audio source without getting disturbed by an external noise 
not even to the single point you have to buy a microphone with a super howl category okay i hope you can understand which category of headphones you are using now okay next the different types of headphones available in the market are moving iron headphones crystal headphones with a exact great clarity of audio source and a next one is dynamic headphones the cost of the headphones varies depend on the manufacturer it varies from 100 rupees to 1000 rupees personal component is microphone it is shortly called as mic a microphone is a transducer which converts sound wave in air into an electrical wave of the same frequency and shape the sensitive transducer element of microphone is called as capsule sound is first converted into mechanical motion by a means of diaphragm the motion of which is then converted to an electrical signal characteristics of the good microphone are output level frequency response directivity impedance directivity is the very important characteristics we should keep in mind while purchasing a microphone directivity means your microphone should capture sounds of 360 degree directions basic types of microphones are carbon microphone crystal microphone dynamic microphone ribbon microphone the cost of the microphone varies from 250 rupees to 2000 rupees you can have different size of microphone also you can easily attach microphone to your clothes while delivering lectures web camera is a video camera that feeds the image in the real time to a computer a webcam is a video camera that streams its image in real time to or through a computer to a computer network when captured by the computer the video stream may be saved viewed or sent on to other networks via system such as internet or email as an attachment webcam is usually connected by a usb cable it is a plug and play device the most popular use of webcam is the establishment of video links permitting computers to act as video phones or video conference stations the types of webcams are internal webcams these are built in webcams and these are attached to the monitor frame other type is external webcams these are externally attached to the computer through a usb cable and it is larger in size when compared to a internal webcams the features of webcam are frame rate resolution auto focus microphones video effects lens these webcams playing a major role in recording a video or delivering a lectures through a video conferences next component is joystick a joystick is an input device consisting of stick that pivots on a base and reports its angle or direction to the device it's controlling 
In computer, a joystick is a cursor device used in computer games and assistive technology. A joystick is also known as the control column and it is the principal control device in the cockpit of many civilian and military aircraft either as a center stick or as a side stick. It is often as supplementary switches or control various aspects of aircraft fight. Joystick are often used to control video games, controlling machines such as cranes, trucks, underwater unmanned vehicles, wheelchairs, surveillance cameras and zero turning radius lawn movers. Miniature finger operated joysticks have been adopted as input device for small electronic equipment such as mobile phones. They give better gaming experience for racing or flying styles of computer games. Drives. It is a memory storage device and it is commonly called as pen drive. It is a data storage device that includes flash memory with an integrated USB interface. It is also known as USB drive, jump drive, memory stick, USB memory, disk key, USB stick, thumb drive, flash drive. But very common famous name we used to coin this device is pen drive. I hope everyone knows about this. Flash drives can transfer data at a rate up to 5 gigabits per second for USB 3.0 and it is called super speed. USB 2.0 can transfer 480 megabits per second and it is called as high speed. USB 1.0 can transfer data at a speed of 12 megabits per second and it is called as full speed. And these flash drives or pen drives are the successor of CD or DVD. CD can store data up to 700 MB whereas your DVD can save a data up to 4.7 GB whereas if you want to trans transfer a data or if you want to store a data at higher space or higher size the best handy and very compactable device is pen drive and it is very a small device you can place it in your pocket and you can carry a data up to a capacity of 256 GB as of March 2016, flash drive are with a size of 1 GB, 2 GB, 4 GB, 8 GB up to 256 GB. Whereas, as of 2018, we have up to 2 terabyte size of pen drives available in the market. As the size varies, cost also varies. The cost of the 4 GB pen drive varies from 250 to 600 depend on the manufacturer. The different manufacturer available for the pen drive in the market are Transcan, SanDisk, etc. It is a very important and most handy comfortable storage device to transfer a data or to store a data. External hard disk. A hard disk is a part of a computer unit. It is often called as a disk drive, hard drive or hard disk drive. Hard disk stores and provides relatively quick access to large amount of data on an electromagnetically charged surface or set of surfaces. 
Today's computer typically come with a hard disk that contains billion types of storage. A hard drive stores all our files and information in a permanent form unlike storing it in RAM which is a temporary memory. An external hard drive is a portable storage device that can be attached to a computer through a USB or firewire connection or wirelessly. External hard drives typically have high storage capacities and are often used to backup computers and serves as network drive. Usually external hard disk drives are connected via USB. The main advantages of external hard disk over internal hard drives are external hard disk provides additional storage other than that available in the computer. Data can be transported easily from one place to another. It is useful to store software and data that is not needed frequently. External storage also works as a backup, that is data backup. This data backup may prove useful at a time of fire or theft because important data is not lost. External hard disk is a handy device and cost varies from 3500 to 4200 for 1 terabyte size of external hard disk. The different manufacturer for external hard disk available in the market are SIGET, HP, Western Digital, Sony etc. In the video you can see both internal hard disk that is which is connected internal to the CPU and you can also see a external hard disk which is connected to the computer externally and it is very lightweight when compared to this internal hard disk and if you want to connect this internal hard disk to a computer, you need to have a separate special cable called SATA cable. SATA stands for Serial Advanced Technology Attachment. Whereas, if you want to connect this in external hard disk to a computer, you have this cable called USB. USB stands for Universal Serial Bus. And you can carry this external hard disk very easily. And it works as a data backup. The software which you are not necessary to use frequently, you can store those softwares or data or photos or videos and you can store this in external hard disk and you can keep it very safely. To conclude, in the last 30 minutes, we studied the different external components of a computer like Spike Buster, UPS, Modem, Headphone, Microphone, Web Camera, Joystick, Flash Drives, External Hard Disk along with their functions. If you have any suggestions and feedback, you can write us to us on the mail ID mentioned on the screen. Thank you.